This is the equipment we'll need to run the uh, program for our duplicate bridge. It's composed of four pieces, actually. First and foremost, we have a little Dell computer that's running XP. Secondly, we have a mouse. The mouse is connected up right here to this USB um, card that that allows two USBs to be connected. Secondly, we have a power supply. The power supply has cords, plugs into the wall, and it also has a, the other end of the cord plugged into the back of the computer right there. Finally, and more importantly, we have the BridgeMate 2 uh, server. And the BridgeMate 2 server plugs in on the back of the computer into a USB port directly into the computer. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the computer and hit this button here to turn it on. Okay, so it takes a minute or two for Windows to come up. It'll be here very quickly. Welcome, and bingo, we're in the opening screen. Now there are a couple of icons on the screen, and the one that we're really interested in is the one that looks like the uh, Ace of Spades. It says ACBL score. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my handy dandy mouse and click on the mouse. You see the little mouse thing going around. And I'm going to go up here to ACBL score and click on it. And it says, okay, we want to start the program. Is that okay? And the answer is yes. And now we're at the ACBL screen. Okay. If you go up in the upper right hand corner with your mouse, you'll see something called game. And that's what we're going to click on next to set up a new game. And it wants to know, is it okay to set up a new game? Well, yes it is. Click on okay. Now, it comes down here and it says okay to set up a game. Well, yes, we do want to set up a game. Okay, so you, now you have a blank screen. I'm going to go make this full screen by clicking on this guy up here. Now I've got a full screen. But all I've got is a blank screen. What do I do now? Well, if you look down here in the lower right hand, it says Control-A to add a section. So what we need to do now is to add a section. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to hold down the control key with one finger, and with the other one, push the A. Okay, that brings up a little pad here, and it wants to know what type of game we're going to create. Well, what we're going to create is a pair game. So I'm going to go click on that, say, okay, we always are going to do a pair game. And it brings up a new section that says, what's the letter? Well, we don't really care what the letter is, but I always use A and say, okay. What color? Well, we don't care about that either, so we just say okay. Now, it wants to know what kind of movement we're going to have. We're always going to have a Mitchell movement, the very first thing. So just click on okay. And it tells us now, it wants to know the number of tables. Now, this is a crucial thing. And this changes from game to game. If you ask the registrar, uh, the one taking up the money, they will tell you exactly how many tables we've got. Uh, if we've got enough people for an even number of tables, like seven or eight, that's great. 
we just put in that number. If we've got an extra pair, like seven and a half tables or eight and a half tables, we bump it up to the next full table. In other words, if we have seven and a half people playing, seven and a half tables playing, then we will say eight tables. And in this case, I'm going to tell it where we've got eight tables. And I'll say, okay. Oops, I didn't put in eight tables, but I will now. Eight tables. Click on the little box there and say eight tables. All right. Okay, now it wants to know the number of played rounds. For eight tables, we play seven rounds. Uh, this will be calculated by the program. You don't need to change it. In fact, don't change it because uh, the timers later are all set by these parameters. So in this case, it says seven rounds, and we say yes, okay. Now it wants to know how many boards per round. Again, this is the default. This is what our timers are all set up for. And in this case, it's four boards per round. So you can tell people to start putting out boards in fours. Uh, so we say, okay. Now it wants to know what type of movement. We're always going to use a standard Mitchell, the very first one. Now it says, uh, do we want any duplications? No, we don't want a duplication. Phantom pairs. This is kind of a tricky one here. This depends on whether we have an even number of eight tables or if we have seven and a half tables. If we have an even number of eight tables, then we say no, no phantom pairs. But if we have seven and a half tables, we click on phantom pairs, yes. All right. Now it wants to know where the phantom pair is, the missing pair. And we're always going to put it north south. So we say okay. All right. And it wants to know what is the phantom table number. We always want that to be the last table. In this case, it is eight, and it pre-selects it for us, so we just say okay. And uh, it gives us a little warning here about how match points are calculated, and we say okay to that. Now, I want to know the pickup sequence. Pickup sequence is always the first choice, number one, by table. Okay. Do, do we want to use the remote server? Well, we, remember we hooked up the remote server, and we do want to use the remote server. So we say yes. Now it says uh, club master points. Uh, and we go down to the very bottom here and click on no master points. Uh, we're not a sanctioned group, and we're not collecting master points. Okay. Next question. Total number of played sessions, and it starts off with one, and that's all we're going to have. So we say okay. Uh, do we want it stratified? The answer is no, we are not stratifying. So we just click on, again, okay. It says include overall rank. Let's see if I can get that to focus. Uh, include overall rank. Well, uh, I don't do that, so I say no. Now it wants to know the event name. And I always put our club name in there for the event name. In this case, it will be Katie. And say... Okay. All right. Now, we're done configuring. The next thing we want to do is to start our server. 
And the last line here says start after all sections are configured. And the way you do that is we first do a F11. F11 is right here. I'm going to do a F11. And it brings up, brings up a whole list of things to do. And the thing we want to go do is start the server. And that's down at the bottom of this list. If I go grab the side and go down at the bottom, I'll see a thing that says start remote server at the beginning of session. And that's the one we want. This is a new session. And that is BMS. Now I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to say, get it down here. I'm going to click on OK. Remote server needs to be connected. Well, we connected it to begin with, so it's there and it's turned on. So I'm going to say yes. And it will be waiting for remote server. The remote server will come up and give you that little screen. And now you're ready to go. You're totally configured. At this point, uh, you can start the timers and uh, start playing, and it will all people can put their names in. They should put their names in, and you then start the uh, remote the timers and start playing. That's all you have to do. Now, <clears throat> now I'm going to go through what you do after the play is over. After the play is over we need to collect all the names and collect all the uh, scores. To do that, we need to get our big list up again. And the way, the way, to get our list up again, what we do is we hit F11. So I'm gonna go over here and hit F11. Nine, 10, F11, there's our list. Okay, the things to do right there and the thing we want to do is go down at the bottom of that list and you see where it says post names from remote we want to get all the names in it's right here post names from remote so we click on that double click and it'll tell us all the names that were posted now i don't have any this is not a real session so it says zero names posted, but normally it will tell you how many names have been put in, like 32 or 40 or whatever. Okay, so we now, now we have the names posted. All right, the next thing we wanna do is go get the results. So again, we pull up our list, F11, go down at the bottom of the list, and you'll see it says post scores from remote, that's BMP. So we click on that, we go down to the OK, and it tells us that uh, the number of results posted. Well, again, we're not really playing a game, so there's no results that came in. But we repeat that process until all the scores are in, or until we can't, let's say OK here. We do it again until all the scores are posted. and. It's kind of a quirky thing that uh, they make you do that two or three times sometimes um, until you get all of the scores in. Uh, I can, uh, again, no results, but I'm gonna assume we got the rest of the scores. You do that till you can't do it anymore. All right, now we've got all our names in, we've got all our scores in. So again, we go to F11. And we go down to the list scores, list scores uh, in order of rank, L-I-S-T. We're gonna list those, and I'm gonna double click on it. And I wanna first list it to screen by rank. And it gives me a screen that tells me all the names of the players and all the scores. Again, we haven't, uh, Put any in so it, it won't show anything but if it's a real game and all the scores are in then it's going to show 
uh, all the scores. All right, uh, now the last thing we have to do here is uh, you can make this big and people can come around and they, they'll see their scores and names and they'll all be happy campers. Now what I also do is I transfer this to another system that has an overhead display. And I do that by transferring it vis-a-vis uh, -vis a memory stick. So I'm gonna close this out and I'm gonna go get my memory stick and I'll be right back. Okay, we've got our memory stick now. <clears throat> and we're going to plug it into uh, our handy dandy computer. I'm using a little different computer, but it's the same thing. Plug it in the side port, and it will come up. I want to know what to do. Uh, in this case, I'm going to tell it to do nothing because I'm going to do it all with the program. So I'm going to close that out. And now I'm going to hit F11 again, bring up my list, and I'm going to go down here to list, just like we did before to get the results, and say OK. Now this time I want to go to a text file, not the screen. So I'm going to open it up, it wants to know where the text file is. So that's how we do it. So in order to put it in the stick, the steps are uh, F11, go down to list, list is right there, and we're going to do it now by text file, not by screen, and it wants to know where it's going to go, and it will automatically come up uh, to my stick here that I've already used the last time, it remembers it. And I'm gonna say, okay. And do we want to append or overwrite? We want to overwrite and by rank. And now it's on the stick. So now at this point, I can take the stick out, pull it out, and go to the AV system and put it in the overhead. And I'll show you how to do that in another video.